Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. I'm still alive. Sorry it's been so long, but thanks for joining me again. Uh, life has just gotten really uh, hectic for me, so I haven't had any time to make a video, let alone almost forge anything. So uh, I'm starting to get caught up with everything now, but um, stay tuned for uh, some videos that are gonna be coming out real soon. I'm doing three today alone. Um, I will be doing a few more in the next few months. Uh, some things I can't talk about, really exciting stuff, um, and some uh, after-built videos, uh, quite possibly some forging videos, some blacksmithing videos, maybe a knife or two making video. Who knows? Sky's the limit. I got some little bit more time on uh, my days off from work. So uh, today's video is going to be uh, about a PID controlled propane forge uh, that I built uh, about a week ago. Took me about two to three weeks to finish everything, uh, going trial and error with the parts, uh, not knowing how to do it myself and, and finding the very, very little information that I found online. Uh, I was finally able to get a mixture of the parts correct and uh, the, the forge does not go over my preset temperature and it shuts, it turns back on uh, when it dips below 100 degrees of the set temperature. So really good for uh, if you're using anything with non-ferrous metal uh, or material that's gonna you don't want it to melt obviously so you want to keep it below that melting point uh, for forge welding purposes and so you don't make a mess in your forge so um, unfortunately I didn't film any of it while I was making it just because I knew I was going to be going back and forth with uh, um, it not working and, and having to reorder parts and things like that so I will just describe to you what I did as we go along. Uh, since everything's already done, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. Um, and then uh, again, I'll be following up with two more videos on two different things. One other build video it was real simple and a product review uh, that's not sponsored either. Um, I will post all of the links for the Amazon parts that I got um, in the description below. Uh, no way am I uh, have an affiliation with with Amazon or the links, so I'm not getting paid. This is just simply for um, anyone who's interested to know how to do this and do it uh, correctly, obviously. Um, and disclaimer, I'm not responsible if you burn yourself or your shop, so make sure you test things properly without gas. Um, and I'll get into that later, but right now let's get into the box. All right, y'all, so I'm going to do a voiceover here just because setting the camera outside just picked up too much of the ambient audio. So I want to say, first and foremost, this box is almost too small, and you might want to get a bigger one. So here I'm going to show you, uh, it's pretty simple in the front. It's just got the PID control and a lighted LED on-off toggle switch. So I just came back from making sure I had the gas turned off and the electricity unplugged from the controller. Once I turn it on, you're going to hear a click. That's totally normal. It's kind of like a tinging noise. Uh, that's the solenoid engaging and opening, uh, which is good because then I can hear it uh, a lot louder since it's pretty loud. So here we go. So you can see... All right, so there you heard the tink noise that I was talking about. It's quite loud, so it's easy to hear. Uh, and now basically I'm, I'm just uh, gonna go ahead and open the box and show you guys how the wiring looks on the inside. All right, here you're gonna see my wiring skills. I try to use as le little and short amount of wire as possible as to save as much room as possible double checking and making sure nothing is in danger of contacting uh, any of the live uh, circuits to short anything out. So that first brown wire there is nothing but a uh, simple 110 volt electric uh, extension cord that I just cut and it's long enough to reach to the wall. That's going into the uh, toggle switch and then I have two outputs going uh, from the toggle switch into the uh, PID control box and then there are also uh, wires going from uh, that yellow wire nut into the uh, SSR 
and the black wire into the orange wire nut that's coming off of the, um, the solenoid as well. And then the other leg of the solenoid gets tied into the uh, other side of the SSR. Uh, the, there's um, two wires specifically for SSR on the PID controller, uh, and that simply just goes into the positive and negative of the SSR itself. It's pretty self-explanatory. I had those in the top two for the longest time, and it was working, but it wasn't working correctly. Um, it wasn't reacting. It, it was kind of doing the opposite of what I wanted to, but I finally figured out uh, that's that was where it was supposed to go all along. So after I figured that out, then it started working perfectly. My apologies if my explanation is a little confusing. Uh, I will try to put a Dropbox link with a PDF schematic of my wiring. Uh, I'll try to upload that to Dropbox. By the time this video comes out, and when I do, I will post the link, obviously, into the description for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna just speed this along because um, there's really no valuable information in here, more so than what I can do on a schematic for you. Um, but just so you can kind of get an idea of what goes where, um, and the labeling for the PID is on the side. Uh, the black and red wire on the left side, that's for the thermal couple. Um, and that just goes directly into that, just that way. Uh, I read some reviews where it said the red and the black were backwards, and mine was just the way it's supposed to be. If it's backwards, it's actually going to count, uh, instead of counting up in temperature, it's going to count down in temperature. Uh, so that's how you know if you got the wiring backwards. It's not going to short it out or anything, it's just going to count it the wrong way. So, um, mine was fine though. Uh, also, the the uh, cell, the relay was uh, labeled correctly as well, so uh, I didn't have any issues once I figured everything out. But like I said, just getting the information off the internet was next to impossible. Um, all this stuff is made in Japan, so uh, trying to get you know actual manuals and things like that. The PID came with the manual, but I didn't really look at it too hard just because the labeling was on the side of it already. Uh, and I have a multimeter so I could test what voltage was uh, outputting to what. And, uh, you know, it was pretty, pretty easy after I figured it all out. So a couple key notes of safety to take away. Uh, you want to test this thing using something that's not gas or something that's not going to catch on fire. I used a, a standard 110 volt two wire light socket with a light bulb attached to it just so I could see it turn on and off when it reached temperature and then started dropping temperature uh, and that's the safest way to do that. Also when I connected the gas lines back I used uh, Windex on every connection just to make sure there was no leaks. I have uh, 3 8 NPT fittings on there and also with uh, gas rated Teflon tape. Uh, so I also have uh, 3 8 NPT fittings with uh, gas rated uh, thread tape uh, to prevent leaks and I also checked that with Windex to make sure I didn't have any leaks, anything that I loosened up and then retightened. These cheaper Japanese uh, solenoids, they're only able to be mounted horizontally. They cannot be mounted vertically uh, and no thermal couple that I'm aware of can be mounted upside down. Um, so just be aware of that and because this is 120 uh, which I'm showing you here. That's why I have to use the uh, standard electrical plug into my wall socket. If you run a 12 volt, then you'll need a DC to DC uh, relay going. Uh, and then if your PID controller outputs 12 volts, then you can just eliminate an extra wire to be plugged in. Simple hole into the uh, fire brick and the ceramic sleeve that's protecting the actual thermal couple from being over over hot but you can see how it discolored it just on my initial test it's rated up for 2200 degrees and I only got it to 1750 so I don't feel like it's gonna be damaged in any kind of way I did order three extra uh, ceramic sleeves in case those ones start deteriorating I can have replacements on hand because they do ship from China so they take a little while longer um, and there's some soot on there because I think there was some coating or something on it before um, it just kind of caught fire and just burned off in the forge, but that's why you'll see in a minute that the forge was smoking 
Um, I'm hoping that goes away because it's not supposed to smoke. So it could be from the brand new fire brick that I drilled or it could be a combination of everything. But about to get into the uh, demo, so I'll shut up now. y'all that's it for the video i really hope you enjoyed it and you can benefit from it and if you have any questions feel free to hit me up on social media uh, and please don't forget to like subscribe and leave a positive comment because i don't read the negative ones man i appreciate it y'all have a good one see you on the next one